welcome to Cook with DIYs, bringing you the best tips, tricks, and tutorials to make having fun affordable. And in today's video, we are going to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a organic balloon garland or arch. So the basic tools that you will need are going to be listed in a PDF link in the description, but I will also go over them verbally just in case you guys are more visual. So the first thing you will need is this pump I got off of Amazon. It was only $20. I think now maybe pumps like this will be probably $30 to $40 on Amazon. You can also find them at maybe a party city or some or your local party store. But as long as they're electric and have a dual nozzles and then also have the interchangeable nozzles. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> the interchangeable nozzles where you can um, make the air come out more narrow for the smaller balloons or a large nozzle for, um, for bigger balloons. And then, so this, it may, you may find that it doesn't look like this, but I will try and find a link to the closest similar one on Amazon for you guys. Next, you're going to need a hand pump. A hand pump comes in handy. When you are blowing up your smaller balloons, it's easier to inflate them that way. Um, I will show you both ways of how to inflate your smaller balloons, but if you have a hand pump, this is probably the easiest way to blow up your five inch or smaller balloons. Next, you will need um, a few different tools to connect your balloons together. So I specifically like to use 260, which are the skinnier balloons like this. Um, they're two, they blow up to two inches <clears throat> They blow up to two inches wide and 60 inches long. That's why they're called 260s. They also have 160s and 360s, but the most common ones you'll find are the 260s. The color of these d does not matter because the whole point is just to connect your balloons together. They're not necessarily going to be for be seen in your garland. And if they are seen in your garland, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, another way to connect your balloons is fishing line. I won't be showing you guys that way in, in this series, but if enough of you want to, I can show you that. I think this is a little more advanced way. You wanna get at least like a 40 pound fishing line to, um, to make sure that it doesn't, the line doesn't snap and it's strong enough to withhold the balloons. Another way you can connect your balloons, connect specifically your smaller balloons to your base, which I'll go over that in another video, is um, glue dots. So these just came in a kit that I bought years ago and I just hold on to them because they're still good, but these are like 3M glue dots. So there's that. And a more, another more advanced way to connect your five inch to your base is to use a low temp glue gun I don't like this because I feel like it puts your it puts your garland at risk of popping. So, um, but this is a Gorilla Glue Gun. I like this one because it is it does have a low and a high temp. So you want to get a glue gun that has the two temperature settings if you're going to use that method. Next, you're going to need scissors. I like to use. I mean, these are my favorite scissors. Uh, <laughs> any kind of scissors to cut your fishing line, to cut your 260s, to make them smaller, which I'll show you why um, later on in the series of how I do that. Also, if you're using any kind of tape to secure your garland down, then you're gonna need scissors. So having some kind of very sturdy, very sharp scissors is good. Another thing I like to keep in my set of tools is a wire cutter because when say you want to remove something and it's connected by 260 or it's connected by the fishing line you don't want to go in there with sharp scissors like this you want to go in there with something a little more um, blunt but that will still cut so you'll just find the you'll just find the line that you're trying to cut and then snip it in half and then that way you don't put your balloons at risk of being popped so there's that. And then the last thing, the last thing you're gonna wanna have is 
And this is just basics. Um, there's other things that I will have in the PDF um, that you know go over like basically any type of scenario. But the last thing for just a basic garland that you're putting up in a house, you wanna have some type of gaffage tape. I like gaffage tape better than duct tape because it doesn't um, peel the tape off the wall and it's it connects to the flooring, like any kind of wood flooring tile. I feel like it sticks to that better. This is used um, usually to you know tape down cords, um, electric cords in um, movie theaters and things like that. So I like to buy gaffer's tape, so I'll have a link to that. Um, I bought off Amazon. So that would be to secure your garland to a wall or some type of flat surface. And then if you have a backdrop that you're trying to secure your garland to, I like to use some type of clamp. So these, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this clamp comes in a two pack from the dollar store. Um, it's very, it has really good tension on it. So some type of clamp like this, or if you have some office supplies at home, um, the large binder clips work well as well. And you just would, you know, secure that to the top of your backdrop and then um, secure your garland to that. So, <coughs> oh, sorry, one more thing. <laughs> Um, another thing I think is good is when you're going to break down your garland, which I don't think people really talk about the breakdown after the event. Um, sometimes, you know, you will have people that want to take the balloons home and things like that. Or you might, if it's in your own home, you might want to leave them up and just let them deflate naturally. But um, if you don't want to use scissors to pop your garland, uh, this little popper thing, I don't know if you could see it. It comes in, I think, a two or a three pack at the dollar store. So, um, yeah, so I use this. It's a little easier and safer than using scissors. So, now that we have that, we are.